Hey guys, it's Ecuador City Elmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Visual Effects Draft. I want to show you a new component that is called the sequential position for circles and show you how it could affect the graph. I'm also going to show you the effect that is playing right above me and how we can create it, how we can modify it, and then I'm also going to be checking that into GitHub. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you this particle system that I created not too long ago to give you an idea of a new component called the position sequential circle, which I have down here in the graph. And I want to show you what would happen if I didn't have this node and show you the, the big changes that we get from using that node. And what it basically does is it changes the position of the particles through a sequ sequential routine. So you can specify, you know, the count of the, the routine is going to have in the sequential circle. And if you have over here, it says element count to use to loop over the sequence. So if I enable this, you're going to see that we're going to get kind of like a, a really cool, a really cool graph. I can also change this to 128 and then we'll get, you know, the loop is going to be about 128. We can also do a lower number and it just depends on the look that you're looking for. I think 64 was the one that was looking for, was looking okay for me. But you can kind of see like if I go to zero and I go back, you can see how the sequential circle is working we are basically going around 64 times and then the particles are getting a spawn from the location of the basically of the position of the loop and then they're looking you know in a circle manner just like this uh, sequential circle the other things that you can do here you can also change you know what the center is going to be if i wanted to change what the center was going to be of z i could go down and then you know go much smaller and it's going to be it's, it's going to give me a different look I can also go up and then go very big and then you're gonna get you know more of we're inside of a tunnel type of thing or i can go back and set it back to zero which is the look that i that i like you can also change the normals you can also change the the position of the particles going up so i can say okay if i want this to be you know something like this you could change it of course the this doesn't look okay with the with what I'm trying to do. And then you can also change the radius. If I want to change the radius here, you can change the radius. You can make it big. You can also animate that if you want to. And just by using some of the components that I show you on the previous videos. So I'm going to go back to something like 0.95. I think, I think that works great. So the other things that I wanted to show you is what I have on the span. I have a rate of currently 100,000. That's what the cost constant spawn rate of the particles is set as and then the capacity is pretty it's pretty high right now not as high as like what i get on the when i do it on my pc and i have my rtx but it's right now four million so if you wanted to go lower than that because of performance you can also do that it's still going to give us a really cool effect the one thing to know though if i go to stats and you look at the frames per second right now they're actually pretty good it's about 200 to 212 frames per second if i wanted to go up about 4 million we're still going to have a really good great rate because this is actually going through the also through the gpu so we the, the frames per second are actually responding really well so we're not going to go we're not going to basically impact it unless we go really high i think i think it was about 60 million when i was starting to get really bad performance on my mac so and then most of the components here capacity the velocity this is the same you know same settings that i normally use I also use the set, set lifetime random. So if I wanted to do, you know, a higher number and have the lifetime be, you know, from nine to 10. So this is basically the starting point and then the ending point. I can also do, probably do 100. And, you know, it depends on, on the look and feel that you're looking for. I think, I think what I had worked just fine, which is nine, I think it was one in 10. And then, of course, the position sequential, like I said, if I were to disable this, this is what you're going to get. And then as soon as we enable it, we're going to get a sequential circle with the different different counts of particles spawning from those locations. So the other things that I also have is I also have forces. So if I were to change this, you're going to see how the the particle system is going to, it looks different. 
So a lot of times it comes to, you know, playing around with the particles and then finding the look that you're looking for. There's really no, uh, uh, basically a proper way to create particle systems that I think for me, and, and this is because I'm self-taught, is more of, you know, playing around with it and looking, getting the look and feel that I'm looking for. And then, so this, this actually looked great. I wanted to have the particles go back and more like looking like flames. So I had a negative Z number. If you want to go, you know, give it a lot more strength, you can see how that is changing. If we go back into the game view, we actually get some really cool effects by doing that. So I'm going to go back to negative 10, I think negative 10 work. If I wanted to change these, you know, the, the X value, kind of see how it's basically going towards the, the left, the left position, which is the X axis. So I'm going to go ahead and undo and then keep it at what we had, which is one and negative 10. I think that's what I had. And oh, let me go back. I'm going to enable this. I think I undo just too much. Okay. So that's what we had. So that's what I'm using here for the forces. I also have turbulences. So if I were to disable the turbulence, you're going to see that the particle system is pretty boring. So if you want to get turbulence, which is basically randomization of the position of the particles, you want to use this component. And I, I taught this in the past. If you want to use Perlin, you want to, you can use Perlin algorithm. You can also use a noise type called cellular, and that's going to give us a different look. I think this one gives us more of a fine look where the other one gives us a better randomization look. And, and that's what I normally recommend using Perlin specifically for, for the particle systems, because it really gives you a really cool effect. And then of course, some of these settings here, the intensity, if I wanted to increment the intensity. Now we have stars and I go ahead and undo, or if I wanted to go a little bigger or a smaller, it just depends on what you're looking for. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to that number. Also the drag can be modified here. You can see how fine that looks. And then if we start dragging, we're basically dragging gravity and then making sure that we're slowing down the, the basically the forces that are getting applied to the particles. And kind of see if I go pretty high, that just gives us a really, just really cool effects though. Like I think that's one of the things that I really like about visual effects graph is just, you can just do so much with so little code that, you know, you kind of get spoiled. So I'm going to go back to what I had, which is 6.8. And then the frequency, if you want the particles, the frequency to, you know, to be higher, and this is the frequency of the noise. I'm going to see how that is changing. I'm going to go back to what we had. I think I like that. And then you have some other settings, octaves. This is the number of layer layers of the no of the of the actual noise. And I think I did a negative number for a reason because it gave me it gave me a cool look. So you can see how that doesn't look as cool. So if I go to negative number, you start to get some more randomization. So I went to negative 353. The roughness, I don't know that that gave me much of a change on the particle system. And but and this is the scaling factor applied to each octave, also known as persistence. So I didn't really notice any changes on this one. So we can just leave it. We can just leave it at one. I think it's fine. And the locunarity, some of these ones, I'm not really sure where they are. To be honest, I just basically been playing around with some of those settings. So. I'm not going to go through that because I'm not, I'm not the person to, to teach you that, at least for now. And then a lot of the, a lot of times I use this periodic total time because it really gives me cool functionality. I can go from a minimum number to a maximum number. So this one tells me, okay, over five seconds, I'm going to go from 0.1 to 11 and I'm doing that on the scale. So if I were to go and lower the scale and basically lower the number, I can also Kind of see how we're starting to get some different different changes. I'm gonna go, let's go back to the number that I had, and I'm gonna just basically delete the connection and show you what I what I did. So the total time, the total value, it's basically calculated by using the minimum and the max, and then over the period. So that kind of looks like a flower or maybe an iris on, on the eye. So I wanted to animate that because I noticed that by changing the scale, I was also gonna get some cool effects. So if I animate that or like go down, then I could do, I think it was the C value. Let me go ahead and undo here one more time. I think it was, yeah, the scale was applied to, to X, Y, and Z. So you can see how I'm getting a variety of the movement on the particles. So because I animated the, the scale. And then lastly is the color, like the color that I chose. And, and I wanted to do something strong, like really, really strong. 
So you can kind of see here's the red and then the blue as well. And I'm also overriding some of the colors here. So if I go here and change the particle size, particle sizes are very important. And it's actually going to depend on how much strength of a color you get based on the particle size. And I'm going to show you this trick. So if I were to go to a, lo a larger number, the the particle bloom that gets applied through the post-processing effect that I have is a lot stronger. So if I wanted to go maybe f five, I'm going to see that we're getting a lot of bloom. If I go slower or smaller, then I'm getting, or I can go something like that a little lighter. I think I think I like, let's go back to, I think that looks, looks cool. And let me go ahead and undo and see what I had initially. And there we go, 0 0.01 was the number that I landed on. And then the gradient, if you wanted to modify the color of the gradient, I'm going to leave it like this because I like the colors that we have. You can basically tell it what mode you want, if you want addictive, if you want more of an alpha color. I'm going to see how that changes the, the graph. So I'm going to go back to addictive. That, that way it gets me the colors that I'm looking for. And then I also selected a main texture, which is the particle, default particle. I can also change and select something that we have in here, which these are not meant to be for particles. These are just textures that I have in the, basically in the project. So I'm just going to select the one that I have. And then, like I said, the size, I already show you that. I'm also orienting the particles towards the, the camera plane. You can also play with some of these orientation. It's going to change the orientation of the particles. So I wanted to go along the velocity. You can see how the, the color changes a little bit because of the, the way that the orientation is working on the particles. I can do, we can just do a look at line and see what we get. So it gives us a little, you know, different effects. So like I said, there's really no right way or wrong way. It's just, you know, experimentation and then finding what you like. And then if you want to change the scale of X, Y, and Z, you can change the scale here. I can also change the scale. Oh, and actually this is not getting applied. So let me go ahead and enable it. So if I wanted to change this, you can see how, so I'm overriding basically the scale of X, Y, and Z by just modifying the value here. And I'm also doing the same thing here. So just scaling the particles, if you wanted to use that. Or I can go back to zero and then zero and not do any scale. It looks like this is, well, let me actually do it again. There we go. So, or we don't use it. I don't, I don't need to use it for now. I think the color that we, that we have. And then if you want to blend the colors together, you can say, you know, if I want to change this, you can change it by just adding a blend color and then modifying the X, Y, and Z value. And you can also tell it, you know, how much blend you want to have. I'm going to leave it as, as what I have. And then I'm also using a color over the speed. So you can, you can basically change the range from a minimum to a maximum. And then you can tell it what type of color mode you want. And then lastly, I have a blend of color alpha because I wanted to see how it would look if I change the alpha value. And in fact, I'm not even using it because the alpha, this is actually set to zero. So, so you can play with some of these settings. I think that's what I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about anything, and then before we leave, let me show you how this looks on the on the actual scene view. And then have you guys just look at Buffalo. So here's the take of the, you know, of looking at it from the game view. And then here's the one from the actual scene view. And you can go and look at it from the back and then look at the differences. So I think I would recommend you always rotate and look at how the particle systems are looking like. And like zoom out and then see what you get. And then if we zoom in, you can see that we're starting to get some of the colors that we added as part of the gradient. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned on Visual Effects Graph, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.